Hi, my name is Craig. Thank you for choosing Nuver. This video is meant as a supplement. For more details and safety precautions, please refer to your manual. The break-in oil has been added to the compressor when shipped within the continental United States on a pallet. Always be sure to check your oil prior to use. Setup instructions will consist of compressor, panel, storage tanks, and hose mounting. The first question asked is where to mount the compressor. Electric compressors will usually be mounted close to a power source, such as a breaker box. Gas power compressors will be located outside. A mover's dolly with a minimum of three quarter inch plywood may be used to move the compressor outside for use. Always be sure that the rubber feet are level and contacting the ground or mounting surface. You must have a minimum distance of two feet behind and on the sides with five feet clearance above and in front of the compressor. Please consider a fan when the minimum specifications are not met or the ambient heat exceeds 100 degrees. The storage tanks will be located within five feet of the compressor unless you have purchased additional hose. Align the tanks in a line with the valves facing out. You will need to secure the tanks to the wall with a chain or lay the tanks down. If the tanks fall, the valve may shear and result in death or injury. Now you can loosely attach the nuts to the tanks and the hoses to the fittings. Do not use Teflon tape or paste on the JIC number 4 fittings. Loosely attach the 18 inch pigtails, running the hoses in a vertical direction. The tank closest to the compressor will be connected to the compressor with an 8 foot hose. The 12 foot hose will be connected from the final fitting to the panel. Now go back to the compressor hose and start tightening all the hoses using two wrenches, one on the upper nut of the hose and the other wrench on the swivel nut on the hose. This will prevent the hose from twisting. You will also need to secure the hose with a clamp every 18 inches to prevent the hose from whipping if blown. The electrical connection should be made by a certified electrician. For 220 single phase 9 CFM 7.5 horsepower compressor, your electrician will need to run a number 8 wire and a 80 amp breaker. For a 220 single phase 7 CFM 5.5 horsepower compressor, you will need to run number 10 wire and a 60 amp breaker. Connect the two hot wires to L1, L2 in the magnetic motor starter box. Connect the ground to the ground post in the motor starting box. For 220 three phase 9 CFM 7.5 horsepower, run number 10 wire on a 50 amp breaker. For 220 three phase 7 CFM 5.5 horsepower, run number 12 on a 40 amp breaker. Connect the three hot wires to L1, L2, L3 in the magnetic motor starter box. Connect the ground to the grounding post in the motor starter box. Warning for three phase compressors, you must check the rotation of your compressor. You will destroy the compressor if it runs backwards for more than 30 seconds. L1 and L2 may need to be changed for proper rotation. The three phase box has three power lines, a ground and a common. The single phase box has two power lines coming in with a common and a ground. Turn the breaker on and turn the switch on the motor starter on. Caution, your system may start and stop automatically depending upon the options you purchased. Gas powered compressors will need gasoline. You will need to turn the gas on, then turn the choke on, and start the engine. Turn the choke off after starting. If you have auto drains, turn the switch on. Caution, all the lines are under pressure and must be depressurized before doing any service. Disconnecting a hose or opening the filtration may result in death or loss of limb. Check the manual drains to be sure that the three drains are closed. They may not leak at a low pressure, but this does not mean they will hold air at 4,500 PSI. If you hear a leak or the pressure reaches 4,700 PSI, turn off the compressor and check for leaks with a bottle of Windex or soapy solution. Check all the hose fittings and tighten any leaking fitting. If you have purchased auto drains, they will drain every 7 to 12 minutes. You will still need to drain the bottom of the tower every 2 hours or once a day. Manual drains must be drained every 12 minutes of runtime 
until the water stops coming out of the drain. You must also drain the manual drain at the bottom of the filter tower every two hours or once a day. When turning the compressor off for a period of time, it would be best to drain the manual drains. If you hear a leak while the compressor is running or have a long fill time, check all three drains. Also, check the hole on the back of the overpressure relief valve located on the back of the condensate tower with the edge of your finger. The overpressure relief valve is a safety device to prevent the compressor from overfilling. The overpressure relief valve may be adjusted to achieve a higher working pressure. The valve has a seat that may need to be replaced if the valve leaks prior to the set point. If you do not have an automatic stop, you will hear air escaping from this valve to alert you that the preset pressure has been reached. The overpressure relief valve must be set higher than the automatic stop to turn the compressor off. To adjust the overpressure relief valve higher, open the drains to relieve the line pressure. Using a wrench, turn the outer part of the valve clockwise a quarter turn. Close the drains and build the line pressure to see where the overpressure relief valve releases the pressure. Repeat the process to achieve a proper setting. To turn down the pressure, turn the valve counterclockwise. To adjust the automatic Barksdale valve, drain the pressure, turn the valve clockwise a quarter turn to increase the pressure, close the drains, and build the pressure to see what pressure turns off the compressor. Repeat the process to achieve the proper setting. Now you can open all of your storage tank valves slowly and fill your storage tanks. To fill your marker tank, check the hydro date and pressure rating. Connect the marker tank and fill to the specifications of the tank. You may need to release the fill handle when the proper pressure is reached. The filter needs to be replaced every 20 to 25 hours in the summer or 30-35 hours in the winter. The time may be shorter due to the higher temperatures or high humidity. To change the filter you must first turn off the storage tanks and drain the line pressure at the panel as well as open all three drains and leave the drains open. The pressure maintaining valve can leak air back into the tower and cause death or injury. Use a wrench between the two allen head bolts on the top of the filtration tower. Turn the top counterclockwise to open the filtration canister. Place one hand on the filter and one above the filter and turn counterclockwise. Install the new filter and lubricate the threads as needed. Close the drains and open the storage to resume operation. The oil should be changed for the first time at 25 hours and every 100 hours after. The compressor should be warm before draining the oil. Drain the oil from the plug on the front of the compressor block. The cap nut should be removed from the top of the block to allow the case to be vented while filling. This is not necessary if adding a small amount of oil. You will need to check the oil daily before use. The oil will be added through the fill tube underneath the plastic cap. It is better to measure the quantity of oil to 1.5 liters. Use only 455 or 751 oil from Nuver. Never use motor oil. This will destroy the compressor and void the warranty. Low oil or improper oil will destroy the compressor. The oil sight gauge is located behind the filtration tower on the bottom of the compressor block. There should be a bubble toward the top of the sight gauge to indicate the compressor is full. The drain seats will need to be replaced as needed. Drain the air and unscrew the valve to expose the seat. Replace with a new seat. A loose belt will cause excess vibration. The belt needs to be checked every 100 hours on a gas compressor and 250 hours on an electric driven compressor. To replace the belt, cut or roll the old belt off and replace the belt by rolling from the small shiv to the proper groove of a large compressor shiv. The intake filter should be checked every 25 hours and replaced as needed. The second and third stage valves should be changed at 500 hours. The first, second, and third stage valves should be changed at 1000 hours. The paintball panel quick releases have O-rings that need to be replaced on an ongoing basis. You will need an O-ring pick to pull the O-ring out and replace the old O-ring with a new O-ring. This concludes our video. Thank you for purchasing a new Vera compressor.
For more information or information about our products, call Nuvere at 805-815-4044.